Well, blessings, friends, blessings, blessings, blessings. We praise God for this night that we're on tonight on Spotlight on Music. And we thank God for the privilege to come your way. You know, we do these specials every now and then, and we are excited to have one of God's best minstrels. It's going to be our very special guest tonight. And listen, what I want you to do as we prepare, we know we're a couple of minutes early, but listen, y'all jump on Bishop Andre S. Woods' page, and then certainly we want you to go to uh, the Fellowship of Music and Arts page, and we want you to find us there. Uh, we're going to be all over tonight, so listen, uh, be sure you like and share, like and share. Let all of your family and friends know that we are going to be live tonight speaking to the one and only uh, professor. I'm calling professor tonight, uh, Joel Britton, uh, homeboy from Detroit, but God has blessed him and he has uh, navigated across the country and working with various uh, people. We'll talk about all of that, but I want you to prepare again. Bishop Andre S. Woods' Facebook page, we're live. Fellowship of Music and Arts page, we're live there. And uh, we want you to make sure that you contact everybody you know, those past friends and friends to, uh, now that know our brother Joel Britton and uh, those that work with him out of the Detroit area, and uh, especially in the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship and across the country and all of the different artists that he's worked with, uh, tell the world we are going to be talking live in just a moment. Dr. Joe Britton is going to share with us his journey, and we're going to get an update on what God is blessing him to do even now, all that he's done. And now, as he's continued music ministry, we're going to talk about all of the updates and we want you to be a part of the conversation. You'll be able to like and share, thumbs up, hearts, put your comments in the comment section. Just wave at us. Let us know that you're there with us tonight, and we'll be happy to share with you. And uh, we're looking forward to a good, a good conversation. I want to welcome now to our platform uh, right here, the Fellowship of Music and Arts, Bishop Andreas Woods page of the one and only Dr. Joel Britton in person, live and in living color. Blessings to you, my friend. Good to have you on. Bishop, how are you doing? It's good to be on. Thank you so much for having us. Oh, man, it's, it's a joy and my treat. I just thank God that when I reached out to you, you was able to work us in your schedule uh, to do this tonight. Um, something I just decided out since we were locked in and dealing with this pandemic and uh, looking for real things to do that's going to be, you know, significant. And I think what you're going to say tonight is going to be significant to uh, the music world, not just gospel music, but to uh, musicians and choir directors and songwriters alike. Uh, to hear the Joel Britton uh, musical story and the legacy that you are, are planning and, and what you're doing in gospel music. I, I want to pray before we start, because I'm going to, I pray all the time that uh, whatever we do will inspire others and they will see what God has done in you, with you and through you. And those that are aspiring to do the same, they can get something out of our conversation tonight. Father, we thank you for this privilege of fellowship tonight. We thank you for your servant. We thank you for Joel Britton, God, and what all you've done in him, with him, and through him over the years, how you've anointed him uh, to be a called out, separated unto you, a uh, minstrel, songwriter, director, uh, musician, God, extraordinaire. And we thank you for the gifts, talent, and the anointing that's on his life. Now, bless this time of fellowship, our conversation, we pray that it is served, will serve as an inspiration uh, to those who might be listening, young musicians, uh, musicians all over God, 
Uh, we pray that they will be blessed by this conversation and that they too, God, would take note of what you can do uh, when you are a yielded vessel. So we give you praise. We pray the saints be edified. You be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. Well, listen, man, it, it is so good uh, to see you and to hear you. And what I want to do, I want you to just take your time and tell us the Joel Britton story, man, how you got started uh, in your musical journey here in the city of Detroit. Because one of the things I know, you know, back in the day when you started in, and uh, we still sing that song, You Can't Hurry God. We, we you know, I, sometimes, you know, when people hear who haven't heard it, they, they hear stuff from years ago, say, is that new? No, uh, that's something out of the, out of the musical vault. <laughs> that's something out of the chronicles and the files uh, from Joel Britton. Listen, and so, man, just, just give us a, a, a Joel Britton view of what, what God has done with you uh, in your musical career. Bishop, first again, I wanted to say thank you for uh, having me on tonight. It's such a privilege uh, to be with you. Um, and actually, the start of my career, you had a lot to do with in Detroit. Uh, you know, it, my grandfather, Bishop Alexander Jones, he was, you know, back in the day, like um, the praise leader in the Church of God in Christ back in the day. So being in his house, you were going to do something and I couldn't sing. So I decided I wanted to play the piano and the organ <laughs> with my mom and my dad. You know, my dad was way back in the golden gospel days there in Detroit um, it with Ed Smith, when the Ed Smith and uh, the golden gospel, I think it was on television and he used to direct that choir. So music was always around me. Um, and I knew that there was something that I wanted to do, but just didn't know what I played the drums for a while. Uh, you know, my mother would take us to different concerts and I'd beat the blue bongo and the bongo. I remember one time I was playing the bongo and my mother used to always dress us in tights because we used to lose our socks. So we had to have on tights and the bongo slipped from between my legs and rolled out on the stage. And my father was directing and looked and his bongo was rolling by. But I knew that there was something at that time that I wanted to do. Um, musically and then it turned out my grandfather started training me and started playing at jones temple and turned it my brother my brother philip britton and i were doing the head in the music department there and then you know like i said with you and the different entities around detroit um, we used to come to st james and it was just musicians that you yourself and the choir was amazing and so my church style came from st james and my church of God in Christ came from Maddie Moss Clark, Clark sisters, because we go over to Bailey Cathedral and those things. And so I brought all of those things together in my life and I made it one. And that's how Joel Britton started out. Then in 1983, well, before that, I did Bishop Edgar Van. Uh, I was at Second Ebenezer for uh, several years as a kid and also at, at Harford Avenue, I was there for a while. Um, but in, uh, for years, uh, Bishop Morton used to come to New Orleans and he would do a revival at Second Ebenezer. And um, Second Ebenezer was where I was. And so he asked me to come down to New Orleans and to, uh, you know, for a weekend, he had a gospel supper club at the time. And so at 18 years old, I ended up moving to New Orleans um, and the rest and then full gospel came into play. And then a lot of writing came into play. A lot of discipline, a lot of growing, which is um, really heavy on me in these days because I'm looking at our examples of when we were growing up as musicians were different, should I say. Um, and I, I take a lot of responsibility because I don't see the same uh, enthusiasm for character. I see the enthusiasm for the gifts, but the character behind the gifts is what's concerning me. Um, the lateness, uh, showing up when I get ready, these kind of things. Um, in our day, you came late, you didn't play because there was somebody else there to take your place. But now it's, it's the discipline of being able to, to, to have the character to minister musically. 
um, that we're I'm seeing that we're lacking. And we're going to be talking about that. I'm getting ready to release a book on a couple of things that um, are going to be coming up um, with even teaching how to play by ear and noticing the gift um, when your child has. It's going to be a children's book and it's going to go on to adults also. But I'm really interested in um, and zeroing in at the children to find gifts because a lot of times you have children that you know their parents want them to play but they don't want to play so that becomes a chore instead of fun for me coming up me play they had to tell me to stop playing um, because I loved playing so much um, but when you have a mother or just forcing their child then you don't even know if the gift is in them so we were having a book coming out about that showing parents to notice the gift and how to recognize the gift that that might be in their child. Uh, then also we have um, a single that's getting ready to come out, a song that I wrote many years ago that's blessed lives really all over the country. Um, it's called We Offer Christ Again. Um, and then we add it again because we're offering Christ again. I noticed um, through this pandemic, a lot of people were confused um, in a whole lot of ways because they weren't able to go into the church. So they had to have church at home and they had to know God for themselves at that time. Um, and come to find out a lot of people didn't because they were kind of worshiping the building and where they were going and not really the God that they were going to see. So God put it on my heart to add a few more words and we're releasing it Sometime this month, um, we offer Christ again. So look out for it on your social medias and all of your platforms. Uh, we will also a video that's so awesome that's going to go along with the um, the song that you will all be able to see. And I'll definitely send you the information, Bishop, because we would like for you to be there for the release of um, the song. Um, but any advice that I would give to any younger musicians coming up is like I was saying, your character has to go along with your gift because character isn't merited, it's earned. Um, you have to earn character. Character has to be built inside of yourself. Um, character doesn't just come because you're a musician or you have a gift because the gift is just that, a gift. I've seen a lot of musicians with great gifts, but their attitudes didn't follow the gift and then the gift left um, and it was really a traumatic thing when God snatches your anointing off you can still play but without the anointing there's nothing there at all and that's been the story of my life mostly is the anointing of God because I can't read music I've never written a note in my life um, but God gave me the gift and I perfected the gift and been all over the world television stations um, matter of fact, Sunday Best, uh, Celebration of Gospel. I think I was with the first band with Sunday Best, I want to say, the, the very first year with uh, Ray Chu uh, to have me on there. So it's been a long, enjoyable journey. Um, and we're still doing a whole lot of other things to, you know, for everyone to look out for. And I can say that I've really enjoyed it. It's been ups and it's been downs, but got to see this all through. Man, that's that's awesome, man. Uh, and you were on, with the first band on Sunday Best. I believe it was the first series. Yes. Yeah, yeah. man. That, now that's 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 a credit. That's awesome, man. Because that band, I mean, those guys, <laughs> y'all be slamming. Oh yeah. And, and you have to learn all of the different artists' music and work with the the uh, contestants and get their music down right and put it in the right key for them and all the things you got to go through, man. That that is so historical. Uh, your father, I remember, I remember your dad, man. I, I a director uh, extraordinary. I remember, and then of course your brother Phil. Uh, Philip was with us at St. James for a spell, you know, before he went to uh, New Orleans. Yeah. And so, man, tell me what what was that like, you know, to uh, make that move to New Orleans, and then everything that Bishop Morton was putting in place, and then the birth of full gospel, and uh, just that whole phenomenon, man. Because you guys, when y'all put out, uh, 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 you know, what, what was the hit? Um, God, I was just thinking about that song today. Because um, they played, 
everywhere. That first oh, choir. Uh, let it rain. Let it rain. And 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 what was the big choir tune? Uh, your tears. You, huh? Your tears. Your tears and the other the up temple song. Uh my God, it's on the tip of my tongue because we everybody was singing it. Not only your tears, you know, uh, we shall overcome. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, my dad, he arranged that in the 60s, actually. See, and a lot of people need to hear that. We upgraded it and re-recorded it with Bishop Morton. That whole um, transformation from Detroit to New Orleans was, well, first of all, it was a culture shock because I never made groceries until I moved to New Orleans. And I never, had, <laughs> I never had Earl in my car until I moved to New Orleans. And so um, the food, everything was just, it was a shock. I was 18 years old and I was just there. Um, but of course, Bishop Morton took me on as, as like a son at that time. And um, that was when, you know, it was just one church in one location at that time. Then we went to two locations and then we yeah. went to two locations. Um, we were doing seven services every Sunday, uh, two at each location, and then one night service. Um, so we were servicing you know, so many thousands. That I want to say about 10,000 people a week back then. And this was in the 80s, late 80s, 90s. when all Yeah, the yeah. And then after the, the full, uh, the three churches and everything was really just uh, like a whirlwind happening. The next thing he, we know, he's like, okay, we're going to the Superdome. He was like, Superdome? Okay. And we went to the Superdome in full gospel. We traveled the world. I traveled all over the world helping him to set up full gospel and to, you know, pull everything together. And the next thing you know, we were looking at 80-something thousand people in the Superdome yeah. in New Orleans. Um, and it was amazing for me to have seen, you know, what happened in the beginning all the way to now this and now all over the world. So it was an yeah. amazing experience to see uh, a baby come to life and to grow as big as it did. Uh, Bishop Morton was an, an impeccable leader uh, when it came down to pulling people together because I watched him take you know, two different cultures, if you wanna say of religion, if you wanna say the Baptist and the Church of God in Christ and bring it together. And that's how the full gospel came into play. Um, yeah for the phenomenon of that, because we were, you know, in the Baptist churches, there was really no speaking in tongues and there wasn't really that, you know, laying on hands and those kind of things. So when that was introduced into the Baptist church, there was a hunger at that time. Uh, yeah. That. Um, so he saw the time, he saw the need, um, the revelations came in what happened, you know, around the world, you know. Uh, we watched how people just came and they flew in yearly just to come. Matter of fact, uh, at Greater St. Stephen's, we were on the um, tourist uh, attraction. Whenever they came from London, England, we would always get a crowd of people in the, in the, in the uh, overflow of foreigners because they wanted to hear the music and the things that Greater St. Stephen's was doing at that time. Um, so it's always been a situation of, uh, in New Orleans, we were always ahead of the game. Everything was always something new that was happening. And now um, the bishop is, you know, he's doing you know, phenomenal things. And I'm just grateful that I was able to get in on the, the ground floor to help to build that. And even watching his son, PJ, who was doing incredible things in music now. Um, he was, when I moved there, I think he was five, I want to say when I moved to New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And now he's, his music career is, is just booming. I'm very proud of him. Well, listen, man, how big was that recording choir that did that We Shall Overcome? It looked like it was 500 of y'all up there, man. Yeah, I, we had, uh, I want to say, because it, it took us an hour and a half to even walk into the choir stand to get everybody up there. They had to be there. Service started at seven, they had to be there at 515 to roll up and to get everybody in the choir stand. So it wow. was between five and we had a we had a whole church in the choir stand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, it it was just absolutely 
phenomenal. And I remember uh, early, early 90s, I had a chance to come down and spend the day. I called Bishop. I said, I just want to see for myself. You know, he said, come on down then, <laughs> man. And I stayed, I'll never forget, it was in June. Man, they got me up. He sent a car to get me from the hotel. We went from place to place. I said, I just looked at him at dinner. I said, I don't see how you do it. But man, he was rolling. I mean, and uh, uh, Pastor Deborah, man, I mean, it was it was just a weld oil machine. Oh, yeah. that, we, we, um, that he had, you know, we, and each place we went to, the adjutants and the uh, assistants was there to greet us, and um, uh, the drivers. I mean, man, it was it was just a blessing to see ministry in excellence and how uh, they respected their leader and how they took good care of him and uh, how he took good care of his guests and everybody who came down. Listen, man, tell me about, because I remember I, Tommy would always talk about going down uh, to uh, New Orleans and doing things with St. Stephen's in the past before the Lord called him home. And um, and also he would talk about you guys and um, Mike Robinson, man, the Mike. Yeah, I remember Mike, man, meeting him uh, uh, when I was down there. So uh, tell us about that, that. Your music department, man. What? How many musicians to cover all them services? What was the step music staff like? We had uh, back in the, I want to say between ten and fifteen musicians because we had three at each location. I was the floater because I had to follow Bishop. So we had a drummer at each location for both services at each location, a bass player for each location, and um, another keyboard player, two keyboard players. Um, at each location. So um, the choir was singing and we served and then Bishop would come and we preached and we go to the next service. And we did that, started out at eight o'clock in the morning. We stopped at, uh, we were finished by one. So we did, uh, 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 what, six services at the time most churches did one service, <laughs> we did six. And everybody wow. fed, um, Everybody didn't feel like they were shortchanged in any kind of way. Um, yeah. It was a full service. Uh, he wasn't there for the bulk of the service. Most of the time we walk in right at the last song of the choir. Um, but it was get in there, service the people, feed the people, preach to the people, and get them on out of there. Um, people were yeah, the yeah. wave at that time, but we had so many people to serve back then that it was it was really difficult to try to get them all in one place. And then we were on separate ends of the of the city um, doing that. So it was a caravan, it was uh, a police car, then Bishop's security car, and then Bishop's car, then my car, then the nurse's car. And we'd be flying through the city every Sunday. Yeah, yeah, man. My yeah, because that, that, that Sunday I was there, I rode with, rode with Bishop and I was like, man, yeah. This here, I was I was tied for him. <laughs> you know, I said, I said, Reverend Bishop, man, come on, and um, but it was awesome, man, awesome, awesome ministry. And then uh, since those days, now you you're in Colorado now. Yes, I am. I'm in Colorado working with a great church here, True Light Baptist Church. Great people, I love you. I don't know if you're watching, but hello. Um, there's some great people, and um. We're going to be doing some great things out of here, out of Denver. Uh, yeah. That, that is going to be happening. But the musicians that uh, came from up under, um, should I say, as I'm their uncle, they called me, I was the father of a, the music department or the musicians, should I say. That, that's what I, I goes back to the character and really having a hunger for jobs and, and your job. Uh, we don't, didn't only look at it as uh, you know, uh, a job. We looked at it as serving. Um, and now it's like, okay, it almost seems like musicians are saying, okay, you're lucky just to have me because I have a gift. No, thank God that you have some place to go every Sunday to serve and to show your gift. That's what, that's how God elevates. Um, because like I said, I've seen it, I've seen it gone before. Yeah. It's some, there's going to be some great things happening that we're trying to do here in Denver also. 
Yeah, these musicians look at it as a gig, man. They, you know, something to do and grab a check. And they, they, they don't stay nowhere long enough to build, you know. And I was just telling a couple of guys, say, man, if you want, if you want to res- want respect, then you got to earn it. You know, build, get somewhere and build. And then whenever the Lord says you need to move, you, you, can, you can go anywhere. And when they call your name, they know, you know, up front that they can't come to you playing, you know. They know they got to respect your gift and honor you, even with the rate of compensation. Some of these guys want top dollar, and they're not bringing anything to the table, you know. And and that makes it difficult. Professionalism is is is, is very key. I'm I'm still never late. I hate being late. Um, if I got to be there at nine forty five, I'm there at nine, um, because you don't know what might happen. Um, yeah, I break down when you get there so if you're got to be there 9 45 and you get there at 9 40 you have no time to fix anything at all um or you may leave and it's an accident anything can happen and then but you knew the night before you had to be there a certain time but it's no it's it's just no ethics that's really going on today back in our day i mean you know we wanted to be sharp every sunday we wanted to be suited up every sunday shirt and tie and Oh, Um, yeah. We we planned all week what we were going to wear on Sunday. Now it's, you know, throwing some jeans. You know, I know it's, you know, it's today and it's it's cool or whatever. I have, you know, as long as your job is done or whatever. But in our day, it was, oh, man, you know, I'm going to Sunday's best. That's what I'm going to do. I'm putting on my Sunday's best. And rehearsals were dressed down. But I I know different day, different time and those kind of things. But it still has nothing to do with ethics and professionalism and, and being responsible um, because anytime that anyone is giving you a check for your, your gift, that means you're a professional at that time because you're being paid for what you're bringing, your commodity. Uh, so it's just, it's just a little lack on that, but we're going to be addressing that also. Yeah. Well, man, man, uh, that is so important. Listen, if you all just jumping on, like and share, and uh, tag somebody, let them know we're on Bishop Andreas Woods' page, and we're on the Fellowship of Music and Arts page, and we're talking to the one and only Joel Britton. we got some folk jumping on, Sherry Carwell, Roosevelt, Selena Carrington, Easy. and uh, Elder John Willis is, is on. Uh, they're coming right. on, right. you know, one by one. But listen, man, why are you on that subject? Because uh, we come from that 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 old school, and and I I can't get with it. But um, I don't fuss too much at the guys. But here's I here's where I am. Now y'all just done gone too far now, cause y'all don't want to take y'all baseball caps off at church now. I mean now, come on, y'all done got away with the Timberlands, you done got away with the jeans and the t-shirt. Now you want to keep your caps on too on Sunday? Come on, y'all. And you get paid. Now the choir, here's my problem. The choir, we make them buy uniforms and robes or whatever they wear, blouses, matching blouses. Guys got to buy suits or vests or whatever. And 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 they 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 are members and tied payers and offering givers. And here you are, you own, you an employee on salary, and you can't even dress up for a couple of hours out the week. I just have a problem with it. <laughs> yeah, it's a little different. It's funny. Um, on the flip side of that, I for a minute I uh, stepped out, if you want to say, and I, I went on tour with uh, Teddy Riley in, in Blackstreet for a while, and so I that was my first time ever in that kind of arena. So in packing, I was like, oh, what am I gonna wear on stage? Okay, well I'm gonna get my suit. And, I had my gaiters and I had my nice tie and all of everything. I was like, oh, I'm gonna kill them when I get on stage. So we do sound check and I have my Timberlands on and my cap on backwards and, you know, just regular, just clothes. So it came time to get ready for to go on stage. And I went in the back and I put my suit and tie on and everything like that. And my good friend, Bernard Bell, I don't know if you're watching, but uh, he came, he looked at me, he said, where are you going? I said, uh, I'm going to stay. <laughs> he said, 
this ain't church. <laughs> you can't wear that on stage. He said, go put your Timberlands back on and your jeans back on. You got to sag and this isn't that. So the point that I'm making is, is it's an attire for everywhere. Yeah. Just, even as a musician. A musician should have a black suit in his closet. He should have at least a suit in his closet. <laughs> I mean, should I say, in his closet to be able to wear. So yes, it's 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 uh it's changed. Um it doesn't it really doesn't mean that much to a lot of people anymore, but I still like wearing suits. I still love it. As a matter of fact, I don't really know how to dress as they say swag. I don't uh, my sister, she she helps me out. Um, but you know, I still like my suits. And I like my ties and, and those kind of things. I'm with you, man. I'm just with you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, well, listen, man, talk to us about uh, 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 the culture in the Colorado area when it comes to uh, gospel music across the board, traditional, contemporary. Or, I mean, what is it like? I know absolutely nothing too much about Colorado, other than uh, when Dennis, uh, was Dennis Leonard, Correct. Uh, used to come here, and uh, then uh, James Brown from the company when he was he went there, but uh, outside of that, I'm like, what's going on in that area? You know, musically, Colorado is trying. I, I, I'll put it like this: it's it's why it's, it's wide open for someone to come in and really uh, help to build this area because this area is it's, it's crazy. Um, the weather is crazy here. Um, a few weeks ago, it was 71 in the daytime and it snowed that night. Um, wow. As a matter of fact, since I moved up here, I developed seizures from being so high up here. Um, so it's a lot of challenges with it, but it's a great city that is capable of growing. Um, it's not that many musicians here. Uh, the guys that come here, they come here for uh, heritage or they come here for the Potter's House um, and those kind of things. So you have people doing, um, you know, smaller concerts and, you know, just trying to build this area because, you know, this is a ski capital. This is a, um, come get on the slopes and that kind of thing. It's not really churchy should I say, not that there's no churches here. You have some great churches here in the city. So, but it's a lot of musical growth that can happen here in Colorado. Um, so to musicians that are looking, you know, someplace to go to, you know, kind of plant your feet, um, be financially ready for sure, but it, it is a good place for that. Um, and even in that, uh, you know, I, I look at a lot of musicians that, you know, first thing they look for is the biggest church that has the biggest stage. Um, a lot of times you don't have to have that. Not if you know what you're doing, if you're a great builder, if you know yeah. how to build something yourself, it's better to start with something on the ground floor that needs you than to get on a string on a carrot and chase behind something at something that's already established. Um, so, um, it's, it's a place ready for growth. It's hunger for growth is very, very, very wide. Um, there's there's not many uh, uh, big choirs. Uh, I think the largest thing that I've heard come from out of here was from like James Brown and also Joe Pace when he did uh, Colorado Mass. Um, and from my understanding now, there's another Colorado Mass too, I think that's getting ready to happen. So hopefully, you know, something will come out of that um, but it's it's a great area to 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 grow uh, with someone that really knows what they're doing to to build. Um, you got to be ready for it though um, here because it's a whole lot of different challenges in this area. Um, but I, I like I like it up here. Um, ready to get back down south, uh, but we'll see what the Lord says. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, man. Walk us through. Give us the lineup of all the Joy Britton, you know, compositions and uh, who's singing them, or, 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 and then bring us up to date and, and talk more in depth about how the Lord inspired you to go back and reach for We Offer Christ and, and, and really put a tag on it to update it or to add to it. 
uh, what was your inspirational lead on that? Uh, as I said before, I, 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 I went back and brought this song, first of all, because uh, a lot of people were asking me um, that they wanted to hear it again uh, in another way, but mainly because it was a need. Um, nowadays, it's really hard to find uh, something to really hold on to, an anchor to hold on to. Um, so the tag that I put on this song is speaking on, you know, today we need an anchor. We need something that's true. We don't know what's real. Um, so the Lord told me, uh, re-offer me again. A uh, short story behind how that song came about. Bishop Morton called me when I first moved to New Orleans, who a couple of years, I want to say about 89. And he called me and said, hey, we need an invitation on him. I said, oh, okay. All right. So I left my house and drove to McDonald's on Crowder. And I pulled up to McDonald's and I was like, mm, well, they offer hamburgers. Well, we offer Christ. <laughs> and so that's how that song was born. And so we're offering Christ again um, to, uh, you know, remind people that there still is hope. And, you know, all of those with this COVID and all of everything that's going on, the uncertainty, there's still an anchor that, that they can hold on to. Um, and that's Christ. That's awesome. Let me, let me ask you this in your professional opinion, because I, I've been getting a lot of calls about some of the old music from Detroit and uh, Matty Clark, Thomas Whitfield, I mean, St. James, I mean, because most of that stuff was on on LPs, on, on vinyl. And uh, do you think it would be wise in your professional musical opi uh, opinion that we go back and get some of this stuff remastered and re-release it, put it on MP3, 4, whatever. Because uh, what, I'm, what I'm hearing now, I had some stations in the South calling me, you know, we want, we want to do this. We want to get this song, get that song. I'm like, well, if it ain't on YouTube, <laughs> you know, I don't know where you're going to get it from because uh, back in the day, we didn't, we didn't have uh, what we got now, you know, everything is going digital. I mean, if you can find it on CD, you can get it transferred. But uh, a lot of that good old music and those that get a hold of it, I'm, I'm, I'm watching certain artists go back and put their spin on some of the stuff, you know, just like just this past week, Zuccardi, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Cortez, he just, he did a little something uh, with Tommy Whitfield's song, uh, I Shall Wear a Crown. He, he, he got into it, you know, got into the vamp of it. And they laid on it about 10, 15 minutes. I don't know if it's going to be actually on the actual recording, but uh, I'm just saying, man, there's so many songs. And like I told you, I think uh, 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 some of your stuff uh, and uh, specifically, I brought out um, You Can't Hurry God, and some of these folk in this generation hadn't heard it. You know, I say, well, that's a Joe Britton song from back in the 80s or somewhere, it's way back there. He said, you got to be kidding. I said, no. That, you know, it's good choir stuff. We recorded that at, uh, with uh, Bishop Baker Van. Right, Second Ebenezer. I remember. Yes. I remember that recording. Yeah. And, uh, 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 and I'm just saying, in your professional opinion, what what do you think the artists should do? They need to go back and cause some of these stations, they still play gospel music. They still got choir stuff that they play. The praise and worship is one thing, but ain't nothing like a choir, man. I, I, I'm, that, I'm sorry, that's just me. No, no, I, I totally agree. Um, I think they should go back and pull. Well, actually, they're doing it. They're just doing, like you said, they're putting different spins on it. Um, but it would be an amazing thing to see uh, for someone to go back and really take the originals and build them up um, from where they are, from its feet to stage from back in those days. Because like I said, that St. James organ, you just knew it when you heard it. When you guys came on the radio, you knew it was St. James because of that stamp. You knew it was you guys. Yeah. So a lot of those things, today is missing, but it would be wonderful. I'm sure uh, you have millions of people out there that would love 
to have the original of those mastered in a digital age to where they can go back and even get the originals of what it used to be. Um, and it would be really fun to even kind of couple them together um, to do a compilation of the old going to the new and putting spins on it like that. So it's a lot of ways that you can go about it. But yes, I think that that would be a great idea to go back and grab some of the older songs and some of the choir songs and bring them up to today. Just like um, a lot of people are asking me to redo Rejuvenate Me and we're working on that. Um, I'm gonna say, hey, the Javon uh, Brown, who's really been working with me hand in hand um, with putting some of these other songs. There's a couple other songs that I did back in the day that uh, people have been asking to for me to redo because uh, you know, when you write for an artist, you're writing for an artist. And back in those days, I was writing for Bishop Morton. So uh, the Lord just laid it on my heart to re-release those songs in a way that, you know, um, that it's more universal, should I say, um, and that everybody can do, you know, can participate in, in doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's, that's awesome, man, because uh, when I hear some of the stuff now and uh, I just recently got a couple of calls and they were asking me about some of the Charles Nick stuff. And see that, that, that's, that's what I remember growing up under these guys, the signature sound, like you say, of the organ. I mean, when you go back and listen to the I'm Encouraged album with Tommy, those intros, you know, those musical, the piano, or the organ, I mean, uh, even way back to he saved my soul on some of the early, early stuff. That organ was just predominant, oh, yeah. you know. When when like you said, all the St. James stuff, man, you were going to get guaranteed oh, yeah. an <laughs> organ introduction from Charles Nix. Oh yeah, guarantee. <laughs> oh yeah, guarantee. Sure. You know, oh, and, and so that's. I mean, we grew up on that stuff. And even back in the day with Maddie Clark, I mean, when Ronnie Kersey was playing for Maddie and, and even when Twinkie came along, you were guaranteed, it was like, a, is, is this a Detroit thing or what? Oh yeah, you were, Detroit was known for Oregon players. Um, yeah. Of course, Tommy had both of them. Tommy was just on an island by himself with so many things that he did. He was like the trailblazer in Detroit along with uh, Rudy Stanfield, yourself and I mean, you guys is who I looked up to and I just made it all a gumbo within myself and snatched yeah. from everybody. I mean, because I, I think uh, uh, Vanessa Bell, she took me on the road with her because I could mimic what Tommy did. Yeah. What Tommy did, I would do exactly like he did. So she would take me and I started traveling with her. I think when I was like 14, I was on the road with, with Vanessa and I had uh, <laughs> uh, they were getting ready to put my mother in jail for me being truants because I was going out of town with her <laughs> driving. <laughs> yeah, but then, you know, Vanessa talked about that. She said, I had Joey, he was underage. I, we just gone. <laughs> All over the <laughs> And I was driving her and I didn't have no license. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what awesome. Yeah, yeah, but I think I was about, yeah, 14. Yeah. Man, that, that, that's, that's, something. that's history. That's yeah. history. Listen, y'all, y'all send us some thumbs up and some hearts. Uh, Joel is telling the story, bringing us, he's filling in all the gaps, you know, from way back in the day. Oh, man, John Willis is jumping on here. He's just talking to the Roosevelt and them, they sending up hearts and uh, thumbs up. But yeah, man, you, you and your brother, man, I, I'm telling you, when I would watch the broadcast, uh, during those years on BET and all of the all of the broadcasts of St. Stephen's, man, how Philip would command that choir, and, and you and and Mike and them was in that 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 orchestra pit, man, in there just pumping it out. I'm like, oh my god, yeah. and and y'all did it so well. It, you you all made us feel like we were live there with y'all. I mean, you talking about some churching and some churching. It was. So I said, good. "Yeah, see." And I said, "You know," but I was, I was being, I was being a little selfish. I said, "Oh yeah, that's New Orleans, but those are Detroit musicians." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. I used to tease yeah. Bishop. I teased Bishop. I said, man, you you walked into a gold mine. You took Detroit to New Orleans and revolutionized the whole state. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I came first and then Phil, because uh, Bishop Morton, he called me and he said, we're missing one thing. I said, what is that? He said, we need a director. I said, I got him. And I called Phil and I was like, Phil, you need to come to New Orleans. And he would get up in front of that choir. And it was like when he raised his hands, they went yeah. to hell. Or I mean, it was like he just had them in the palm of his hand. You're talking, like I said, five to seven hundred people that he had total control of at a yeah. period of time and it was i mean director second to none um yeah master just a master. master he mastered directing um and his idol and what he got a whole lot of his uh ability of in training and watching someone was jimmy dow that was yeah. kind of somebody that he looked up to in the directing thing but and then getting the natural gift from my dad because my dad was director to like him you know so yeah he just yeah that whole thing up and took it to a whole nother level uh when you want to say a choir director he was second to none he was man he was the kind of guy i remember when he came on board st james and he would direct for the Lego choir yeah. and one song in particular i'll never forget two yes i know jesus Mm -hmm. And you should be a witness. I'll never forget. Phil would take the song and write his own ending. Oh, yeah. <laughs> on the spot, Doc. Oh, yeah. I mean, unrehearsed. Oh, yeah. But he, he would get our attention and say, you know, follow me, follow me. Man, he would take us uh, to some rounds. I, I mean, the choir was like getting theory, you know, choir music 101 theory <laughs> on the spot doing worship and uh he would tell us as musician meet Daryl and Sydney and all us oh man he would have us going because uh you had to watch him to oh, stay yeah. on cue I mean he cut us off bring us in cut us off bring us in do the repeat yeah. I mean with such grace and skill and and the church would just go crazy oh yeah I mean it that was just it and then you know of course what JD would do, JD sometimes would start a song. He was he was good for this like Reverend was, man. JD would start a song, then he'll point to either uh Philip or Brian Preston and, right. and let them finish the song. Awesome, man. Oh, yeah. yeah, but Phil, Phil was a gift, man. We when he told us he was leaving, I said, Well, I'm going with you. I ain't standing. <laughs> I said, man, you know, I said, we we need a director for this choir. And you you fit the bill, and, and and so man, it was just awesome. So we we remember, man, St. Stephen's when you guys were a team down there, and how the Lord blessed you. And so now you had a new place, new church, uh, pumping out new music, and and getting ready to release new spins on some of your old stuff. And uh, now, so you, you your choir, are you did you record this with your choir, or you? chose a special group to do the re-release. The re-release, um, we have a uh, Zacardi Cortez is on there. We have uh, Javon and, and Gerard Woods is going on there. And um, we have young lady, uh, Anna Beth Marcus is from Texas, who's upcoming and she's uh, amazing who you will hear. And, and we got Andrew Boucher on bass and we have uh, Jonathan Dubois on guitar. And we have My God. Eric Walls on guitar. And, I did a little piano organ and then my co-producer with me, Javon Brown. So the song, it really, it took a whole nother level. It took a whole nother, it's gonna, I'm sure you're gonna love it. Man, you got some heavyweights. You got the Bulls oh, yeah. and you got Gooch, man. Oh, yeah. you, oh man, you got the veterans on there yes, sir. who know how to do it in their sleep. Oh, you know. and been doing it in their sleep for years. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, listen, man, I, I want you to take a minute and just uh, say something to these up and coming musicians, inspire them and encourage them uh, to hone their craft or uh, how you, the Lord will lead you to encourage them to to stay true 
uh, to to their music and if they expect to get where you are and do some of the things that you've done and are still doing. And, and please speak to longevity and why God has blessed you since day one and you're still here and relevant. I, I, I need you to help these guys with that. The first thing I would say is, like I started out saying, um, let your character be just as big as your gift. Um, if, you, if your character keeps up with your gift, it takes you a long way. I stayed with Bishop Morton from 1983 all the way to Katrina, um, which Katrina happened in 2005. Um, so from 1983 to 2005, I had one job. And that's uh, saying a lot, especially being with that kind of ministry. When you're jumping around chasing a dollar everywhere and literally a dollar more because it's a bigger stage, then you're doing nothing but church hopping. You're not growing, you're not growing personally, and neither are you helping the kingdom because the first thing that's said is, oh, you don't know if he's gonna be here next Sunday or not. I mean, that's a bad thing to a uh, bad reputation to have. Longevity means everything. It gives you stability, people know you. Uh, you can build where you're at if you know what you're doing. Um, but if you're looking for a church to build you, then you're, you're, you're going down the wrong road. Always stay in a servant's mentality. Um, you are there to serve. You're there to serve the people. Um, you're getting a check to serve. You're not getting a check just because they like you so much. You're there to serve. Um, we've taken off that servant mentality hat um, and basically is telling the church, you be glad I'm here. Um, and that's just an attitude that uh, it, it really bothers me when I hear, because I hear it also um, from the musicians. And a lot, I've heard it talk to a couple of musicians that were telling me, well, we didn't grow up in a home that had integrity and that showed character. Um, and, you know, that that is a problem. And I understand that. But it's never too late to begin and to start with the character, just as much as you practice your gift, which practicing uh, is, is very important in coming up and knowing and being a good, um, uh, uh, your versatility, um, you know, you be able to play a hymn, you should know some hymns. Um, there's not a, a church setting that I can't walk into and fit in because I try to make myself well-rounded enough in all of the genres of music and all styles of music that I can be able to fit in. Um, but, you know, a lot of everybody is staying on today's stuff. You got to know that stuff from the past too. You got to know some hymns. You got to be able to carry it because everybody in the church ain't dancing. Some people want to hear a message. Um, so that's some things that I would really tell the musicians coming up today. Um, I love what they're doing musically. They're really expanding. Uh, they're taking it to another level of, of different creativities, especially with these computers. I'm, I'm stupid when it comes to these computers. I'm a one finger still typing kind of person. Um, but so to watch how they've taken music and it's almost a video game to them, um, they can do that for hours, but they can't stay someplace for a day. So that tells me that there's some kind of disconnect there. Um, so that would be basically what I would so that's on my heart now for musicians these days is to really learn longevity and, and the character of what you're doing. And thank God for, for your gift, because it is a gift. Uh, I thank God every day for my gift. Um, I've never filled out an application in my life, and I'm not bragging saying that. Um, but it's, I sat down and I, I practiced and, I, and I, per, I perfected my gift and so that my gift could make room for me. Uh, so I thank God for that. And I, I thank God for even connecting me with certain people like yourself in Detroit. Then my mentors like Thomas Woodfield and, and all those guys that, that played before me and, and, and showed me different things and um, was able to you know put into my life what I am today and maybe the musician that I am today. And I was able to pass it along to other musicians. So hopefully it'll keep passing down to generations to come and um, you know, musicians will keep growing as, as they are doing. Man, that's great, that's great. That, that, was, that was, when I came down there, there was a young lady at one of the campuses 
on the organ. You remember who she was? Yeah, Kim Curry, I Curry sister. Man. And she sings like she can play. Wow. I was like, I kept looking up there. I said, is she on the organ or what? what? <laughs> yes. Man, she was awesome. Awesome. Awesome yes. musician. She, oh, she was the minister of music for uh, Pastor Deborah's uh, Women of Excellence. She was over that mass choir. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And she's, uh, she's, oh my God, she's remarkable. Like I said, she can sing. Well, I mean, the family she comes from, you know, the Karee family, I Karee, and um, she's just, she's amazing. Kim was is an amazing, we just had a, an amazing team. Uh, Gwen yeah. was on the team at the time and Jackie Mayfield and, you know, I mean, the team, Mike Robinson and PJ and Elvin Ross and it's just so many that we right. had in one place. Uh, we couldn't lose this um, in what we were doing. And then we were able to jail because I've seen situations to where you can have a lot of great musicians, but they can't all play together because you have so many, it's just like a basketball team. Everybody out there can shoot. Everybody can run the ball, and but they still have to get that chemistry. And right. we had a chemistry that was second to none uh, under the leadership of actually my, my brother as minister of music. And uh, and the band that we had was just it was an incredible band back in those days. Man, man, that's 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 awesome, man. And and here you are now continuing. The longevity is there. And you know what I tell folk when they call us old school? I tell them, I said, you better hope to live because you can't erase history. The yeah. question is, in five or 10 years, will anybody be calling your name? That's the, that's, key. That's the question. That the <laughs> I key. ask them all the time. And then the next thing, Joe, I, and I, I'm, I don't try to be, I'm not being funny with them or I don't try to embarrass musicians. I try to teach them by example. And I ask the question, how come I can play what you can play, but you can't play what I can play? I mean, when it comes to their their musical training and repertoire, some of them never never stretch themselves uh, to learn, you know, like you said, you can go anywhere and fit in. Whatever they sing, and you can, you can sit down and play right along with them. Some of these guys, they're so limited and, and, and all we try to do is to encourage them, listen, man, get it all. Why you getting, get it, <laughs> you know, learn all kinds of music, learn every, every, every hymn, every hymn, whatever you can learn, get it. Don't run away from it. And uh, the fact that you were at one place for all those many years, the stability is another thing that's lacking in in the culture of these musicians today, because like you say, man, they if you offer them five dollars more, next door, now they ain't got to be down the street. It can be next door across the street. They gone, you know. And so uh, I prayerfully hope that those musicians that will see this and those that are logged on, listen, that you are gaining some inside inspiration and some expertise from a master, from his experience who have done it, who has lived it, who is living it, and who's been blessed by it, and how God has blessed him to come uh, thus far and still, you know, out here uh, working at a viable church, doing music ministry that's uh, uh, relatable, and showing us how to get it done. Uh, Joe, man, I just want to thank you for your words of inspiration and encouragement and instruction. And listen, man, give us give us the particulars on your release date. How we, when we're going to look forward to seeing this drop? I will. I'll send it to you. We're looking at the 20th. Well, actually, we'll be releasing on the 18th, um, but we're going to have a Facebook Live um, situation to where people can come in and join and uh, watch the video. It's only going to be 20 minutes long. I know it's Father's Day um, that day, but it's only going to be a 20 minute long situation to where we're going to introduce the video and the song on that day. So I'll definitely be sending you the information what time. Yeah. And, and we, we can post it on all our platforms. And uh, uh, 
make sure everybody get a notice. Take a few moments to come on and watch and to hear this phenomenal music by Joel Britton, man. Just awesome, man. I appreciate you. I want you to know that. Thank you, and sir. And thank you for taking this time in the midst of your schedule. Oh, that I know you got stuff going on. No, you, you, you're you home, people. You know, as soon as you call, I'm there. We're on. Oh, man, I appreciate that. I appreciate you too, Listen, sir. man, what I want to do, I want to pray. Okay. And then uh, uh, we'll let our audience know we're, we're out of here. And we got to do this again soon. Let me know. You know, uh, a little while after your release comes, we'll, do. we'll come back on and monitor and and see how God is blessing even on that end. We will do. All right. Sure. Thank you so much, Bishop. All right. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this privilege that we've had to conversate on kingdom business. We thank you for Joel's life, his anointing, his contribution to gospel music history. We thank you, God, for how you used him. You chose to use him and you endowed him with gifts and then your anointing. Now, God, we pray that as he goes continually forward, God, that you will go before him, make easy and successful his way and all that he put his hands to do, you will cause it to prosper. We even speak Psalms 90, 17 over him. And now, Lord, let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon him Establish the work of his hands upon him. Yea, the work of thy hands, establish thou it. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. Amen. Thank All right. You. Thank you so Bless much. You. Well, li listen, friends, you heard it right here with Bishop Andre Woods, the Fellowship of Music and Arts. We appreciate you all joining us. If you missed any part of this, you'll be able to go back. Uh, it'll be uploaded to YouTube and Go back right here on our Fellowship of Music and Arts page, and you'll be able to watch it in its entirety. Bless you, Joe. Thank you, sir. And man, we love you, and we'll be in touch. All right. Thank you, sir. To all of you, we say, I command the blessings of the Lord to overtake you. That is my prayer. Till next time. Bless you. Thank you.